Why do you say food is a weapon? I didn't invent the phrase food is a weapon. I quoted Kissinger, who said so clearly in the 60s that we have to use food as a weapon. And he first used it in Vietnam. They realized that the Viet Cong were very strong because when you do rice cultivation, you have to do it as community. You have to go together to transplant. And they said, we've got to break this. And they started bread and subsidized wheat and milling factories. And that's when he first said, when you control food, you control people. So we have to use food as a weapon. Even the Green Revolution was part of this food as a weapon thinking. And uh, I've said, you know, you take it further when you start controlling seed, then seed becomes a weapon of control. But in now in the case of seed, you're not just controlling humans, you are trying to control life on earth. So I think both seed and food are what weaves life. And they have to be instruments of peace, not weapons of war. How can we feed the world if we just have small farms? Don't we need big chemical farms? The data is now so clear. My own experience showed me that the smaller the farm, the more it produces, because the one ingredient on a small farm, and particularly small farms run by women, that's absent on a large farm, is love and care. And in any living system, love and care just creates healthier ecosystems. But the FAO's data has confirmed this, that 80% of the food we eat comes from small farms. Only 20% comes from industrial farms. Industrial farms are not feeding the world. And I have a lot of detail in this on my, in my book called Who Really Feeds the World, which I was asked to write when there was an expo on food in Milan in 2015. And it has all the data of the UN agencies uh, but my own life and my own research and my own practice has shown me that small farms are the only way to take care of the earth, to ensure we have society. Why are hundreds of thousands of farmers of India protesting? They're protesting against policies and a system that would devastate them with the introduction of large corporate farms. And as they say, we are fighting, not just for our survival, we are fighting for the soul and the soil of India because without us, there's no one to take care of the soil. And it's when we take care of the soil, that's when we create an India, that's India, an ecological civilization. Otherwise we will be like the Midwest, desertified, emptied out of its farmers, an empty countryside. And of course the Bill Gates of the world want to rush this further, farming without farmers, farming with drones and surveillance cameras. And that's the big dream because they, you know, I remember there was a song, if I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning, I'd hammer in the evening, I'd hammer all over the land. But now it is, if I have a surveillance technology, I'll put everything under surveillance. And that's a big part of the problem. They don't know how to do anything else. They don't know how to care. They have no knowledge of life, but they now have surveillance tools in their hands. It's their hammer. And they're hammering the air, they're hammering the farm, and they're hammering our lives. What do you want people to know about genetically modified foods? Without GMOs and chemicals, would people starve? People would have real food if we got rid of GMOs and chemicals. And we'd have more food because we'd have systems that allow small farmers to survive and they produce more that would make food affordable by having local economies. What, you know, when I started to look at GMOs, I just finished my book on uh, the Green Revolution, 80, 84, I started about 86 maybe. And I was invited to a meeting where the corporation said, we have to do genetic engineering in order to take patent claims and collect royalties. That's where our future profits will be. And we have to have an international treaty. And that 87 meeting is what led me to start saving seed, led me to save, uh, to uh, create Navdanya, and uh, people can go to the Navdanya website to find out what all this is about. At that time, I did two things besides saving seed. I started to work with my government and with international agencies to say, we've had 
fossil pollution, climate change. We've had chemical pollution. Rachel Carson wrote about it in Silent Spring. And now we have genetic pollution and we should be prepared to deal with this. So we created a whole language and framework on biosafety and the United Nations appointed me on the expert group to write this framework for the international law, which became the international Cartagena protocol. So we have a regulation that's being violated, but more importantly than that, the first GMOs were commercialized in 92. In these 20 years, we have seen a total failure. The BT cotton failed absolutely in India. The yields went down. You're supposed to control pests. The pests went up. People are dying of pesticide poisoning. They're spraying more pesticide. In the United States, the Roundup Ready crops have failed. Uh, now, so they're trying to bring gene editing. But it's a failed technology, and it's failed technology because all living systems are self-organized, and they're complex, and they work in deep, deep harmony. When you shoot in a clumsy way a gene and add it with an antibiotic resistance marker and add it with a myron promoter because your tools are so clumsy, <coughs> you rupture the self-organization capacity. And that is why instead of controlling pests, you create resistant pests. Instead of controlling weeds, you control, you create super weeds like the amaranth and you now say we'll push the amaranth to extinction through gene drives, even though the amaranth is sacred to us in India. Um, so GMOs are a failed technology and the new GMOs are based on the same me mechanistic reductionist clumsy assumption that led to the failure of the first generation and dismantling safety will harm people, will harm public health, will harm biodiversity and harm the planet. And for a few years, now the tech billionaires are re re reading this new GMO race. It will not feed people. Before World War II, how did we grow food? And then why after the war did we switch to chemical fertilizers? Well, before World War II, we grew food working with nature. We grew food through biodiversity. We grew food through recycling. And in fact, that's what Albert Howard found functioning totally in a flourishing way in India and wrote the book, the Agricultural Testament on Organic Farming. World War II led to the spread of chemicals in farming because the World War and Hitler's experiments in concentration camps were basically based on deploying a group of companies called IG Farben and their American partners, DuPont was involved, Monsanto was involved, the current poison cartel was totally involved in IG Farben and the original work was to create chemicals to kill people. You know, the gases in the concentration camp are the ancestors of the pesticides. The explosives are the ancestors of the synthetic fertilizer. And I am so, so disappointed that Bill Gates actually has a whole chapter on how we grow things. And he is standing in front of a mountain of fertilizer and saying, this is the most important innovation even though we know it's a very big part of climate disaster, that's him standing there. And he's celebrating Harbor Bosch. Harbor Bosch were part of IG Farben. And I think Harbor's wife committed suicide because she could not tolerate the violence. So war chemicals became agrochemicals. And then because of the power of these companies, and just remember, it isn't the case that here were German companies and here were American companies. They were together. The people were fighting, soldiers were dying, but the companies were working together with this experiment with them. And they were together in becoming the poison cartel that pushed chemicals in farming and created chemical agriculture and then totally rewrote the curriculum, rewrote the science, seed is an empty container. Soil is an empty container. Fertilizer is a fuel for plants which are a machine. I read every book that is taught when I was writing the Green Revolution book. And I said, how could we lose our way so badly? Because of a group of killers taking control of the very important source of what makes life, our food. And I think we need to take lessons from that for the period now, because again, a small group of billionaires are wanting total control 
Google now has a life sciences division. And they say, we've got to defeat Mother Nature. That mentality has brought us the ecological crisis, the health crisis, the democracy crisis. And four people declaring war against the earth are now being asked to offer the solutions. We have to energize our democratic spirit much, much more deeply than we are doing. What contribution does industrial agriculture make to climate change? So when I was going to Copenhagen, I realized that agriculture was not in the discussion. It was as if it's only about energy consumption. And do you get your energy from fossil fuels or do you get it from solar? And that was it. But the, the climate issue is the disruption of the metabolic order of the planet. It's much deeper than consumptive energy. So I wrote this book, Soil Not Oil, both because I could understand that the soil held the solutions, but the way industrial agriculture was being practiced was a big part of the problem. So I'll give you the figures. About 15% of the greenhouse gas emissions come from the production systems based on fossil fuels and chemicals based on fossil fuels, like synthetic nitrogen fertilizers that Bill Gates is promoting as a solution. Second is land use change. But land use change is just an anonymous way of describing invasion into the Amazon to grow GMO soya, invasion into the rainforests of the Indonesia to grow palm oil. And this is 15 to 18% of the emissions. And then you take good healthy food, you could go to your garden, eat a carrot, get some cabbage, get some lettuce. No, no, how can you have food sovereignty? So you must process it and transport it and package it and retail it and make it totally anonymous. And that's 20% of the greenhouse gas emissions, but I would add 75% of the chronic disease problem. That's where it's ultra processed food is where it's coming from. And then because you celebrated uniformity rather than diversity, you create waste because in the farm, you throw away things that aren't that perfect size. Because of the best before dates, you throw away so much good food. All of this is linked to the industrial globalized system and an ecological regenerative system would not only get rid of this 50% emissions, it could actually draw down the built up uh, carbon and nitrogen and, um, and solve the climate problem in a 10 year window. There's another little bit in this. <laughs> oh my gosh, Mr. Gates, go to sixth grade biology lesson with you before you write a book you're selling all over. But in this history, I can't believe it. Yeah, I come from the land of the sacred cow. And our cows don't stink. I, my mother gave me her cow shed to start the research foundation. And our cow shed didn't stink. You know, it's only factory farms that have methane emissions. Mr. Gates is trying to make us believe we have, we have one container, he calls it the container. We have one stomach container and, uh, and therefore we don't emit methane. But the cows have four and therefore they emit methane. That's not, Cows are meant to eat roughage. The roughage and herbs get digested through the four stomachs, but you feed them intensive feed and put them in factory farms. You're going to get methane emissions. K4, you know, have you seen the stink when you go past a hog farm, a pig farm, a beef farm, a factory farm? That's where the stink comes from. So I hope some of you will hold a lesson on, uh, on cows and, <laughs> and show that the four stomachs are a blessing for the cow. Not, not a methane emitter. <laughs> Who wants to take control of our seeds through patenting? And why is this bad? Well, very clearly, I was at a meeting where the idea of patenting was laid out by the very same corporations that had worked in Hitler's time to create chemicals to kill and then turned these chemicals into agrochemicals which have continued to kill. The insects are gone, 83% insects are gone. The monarch butterfly is gone. Uh, they said very clearly in a 1987 meeting called the Laws of Life, that we have to patent the seed and we can only do it through GMOs. And I said, but a patent is granted for an invention and a seed is not an invention. A seed is not a machine. And this is by the time we are through. It will be treated like a machine. It will be treated like a manufacturer by the year 2000. Every seed will be a GMO seed. No farmer will have their own seed. 
and we will define it as a crime if they save seeds. And that's what intellectual property on seeds were. That day, I decided to save seeds. And that day I said, no, I will work with my government to write laws that seeds and plants are not inventions. They are our relatives. So our law, Article 3J says, plants and animals and seeds are not human inventions, therefore cannot be patentable. So who wants to patent seed? It was the poison cartel. But the poison cartel has now dissolved into control by the billionaires. Today, Bill Gates singularly wants to control the seed. We have just done a new report called Gates to a Global Empire, because I have found that the green revolution, which had created this monoculture in farmers field, but taken all the diversity of farmers and put it in this consultative group of international agriculture research gene banks, and about 25 of them. So our rice went to Erie, our uh, potatoes went to um, the potato farm, maize and wheat went to Simit in Mexico. This year, Gates has taken control of the public seed banks of the whole world. He's the single biggest donor. In addition, he was the brain behind the Svalbard Doomsday Vault in Norway. The, to call a seed bank a doomsday vault, you know, for me, seed is about life. And our living seed banks are where we so hope. So Gates is very much the new player who wants to control seed. Mm -hmm.